Hi everyone. This video explains how to use the custody plan sheet. It contains two chapters, operation and tips. Use the video progress bar to skip to any topic. Note that this video supplements the quick start guide video, which explains each step of the estimating process and describes system standards for sheet layout and handling. If you have not viewed the quick start video, please do so before viewing this one. Written documentation about the topics mentioned in this video is available on the support website. Click on the knowledge base command in the Ironworks toolbar to access it. If you want our help building a master estimate, playing what if games with your fleet's composition, or producing charge rates for a complex job, or a special client, contact us using the consulting page. Now, let's review the operation of the custody plan sheet. The custody plan sheet is used in step 3 of the process of building a fleet employment cost estimate from scratch. Each step of that process is covered in the quick start guide video that is available on YouTube on the Ironworks ECM channel. The purpose of the custody plans sheet is to specify the nature and timing of the custody of each machine record in the equipment list. A machine record's custody properties include custody type, custody period, and forecast employment for the rate period, FERP. A machine record's custody type is established by selecting one of three options rented, leased, or owned. Custody type election determines how the cost of the subject machine record's employment is calculated. Each custody type is linked to a set of CBS component cost applicability rules specified in the estimate setup sheet. The calculated cost of any CBS component with a setting of no, cost is not applicable, is excluded when that machine record's total cost is calculated. A machine record's custody period is established by specifying a start date and end date. For custody start date, any start date after January 1, 1900 is valid. Specify for rented and leased equipment the first day of the rent or lease period, and for owned equipment, the date of purchase. For custody end date, any end date later than the start date is valid. Specify for rented and leased equipment the last day of the rent or lease period, and for owned equipment, the date planned for disposal or sale of the subject machine. Note that a machine's custody need not lie within the rate period. That's because Ironworks automatically determines if a machine's custody period overlaps the rate period. If it does, the machine's employment cost is based on the forecast employment for only the overlapping months. Forecast employment for the rate period, FERP drives all employment-based cost and resource requirement calculations. FERP can be specified in two ways. Both can be valued at the same time, but one must be elected as the basis of cost calculations for each machine record. The elected option can be changed at any time. Option 1, Specify Month Quantity requires the input of forecast employment figures for each of the months the subject machine's custody period overlaps the rate period. Overlapping months are highlighted to make input easy. Of course, for machines employed on a seasonal basis, no employment is forecast for the off-season months. Option 1 takes more time but enables more accurate cost and resource requirement forecasting and thus more accurate charge rates. It's typically the best option for large, expensive machines, whose charge rates are key to bid success. Option 2, Specify Lump Sum, requires the input of only one value for the entire custody period. That value is automatically distributed or spread evenly by workday to the months that the subject machine's custody period overlaps the rate period. Option 2 takes less time but results in less accurate modeling of monetary cost and resource requirements for the rate period. It's typically the best option for smaller, less expensive machines whose charge rates have little effect on bid success. Now let's review some tips for using this sheet. Tip 1. 
specify employment for all months in the system's 36-month calendar ribbon, including all extra months that exceed the number of months in the rate period. This is especially useful for updating charge rates on a rolling basis. By just changing the rate period start date, you can build a new set of charge rates that reflect your forecast unit cost for maintenance labor and fuel, your plans for overhauls, preventive maintenance routines, and all the other cost breakdown components. Tip 2. Be careful about overlapping employment forecasts when multiple machine records are set up for the same machine. Specifically, when multiple machine records are set up in the equipment list to model different employment cases for the same machine, be careful to not overstate its forecast employment. If you overlap their monthly forecast employment, forecast resource requirements will be overstated unless the estimate is set up to involve more than one shift per day. Tip 3. Model lease purchase agreements using two machine records. One for the lease period and one for the ownership period. This way, when bidding, you can use a separate charge rate for each custody type, or, you can use an employment-weighted composite charge rate that accurately reflects the cost and resource requirements of both. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.